<laughs> and we're back. We are live again, and we're making salmon, which I'm really excited about <laughs> because I love salmon. Uh. It's one of my favorite proteins, and this meal is so easy, like ridiculously easy to the point where I'm actually switching up the recipe that I'm making because it's so easy that it doesn't even take any chopping or like crazy cooking steps. So I'm gonna add in a few things just to make it more fun. But basically, so I'm making salmon, sesame salmon from my meal plan, 30 and 30, and it has roasted cauliflower and quinoa with a sesame, ginger, garlic, tamari sauce, which is kind of like the best part of the whole thing because that's the flavor component in all of it. But it really comes down to roasting salmon, cooking some quinoa, or sorry, roasting cauliflower, cooking quinoa, and then cooking salmon, which you can do in a bunch of easy ways. I'm gonna pan fry it. <clears throat> the recipe calls for baking. But the first thing we wanna do is roast the cauliflower because I like my cauliflower a little bit more roasted. Um, I eat it raw too, but I kind of like when it gets to the like brown, brown bits from roasting it. So I already have the oven preheating right now to 415 as per the recipe as well. And I've gone ahead and pre floretted is that a word? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I cut my salmon into florets. Your ca cauliflower you mean? <laughs> I keep doing that. I cut my cauliflower into florets um, before because that's, like I've said this in the last two videos and I'm just going to keep emphasizing this, but this meal plan is really all about getting everything done in under 30 minutes. And so a big part that's going to help you do that is prep your veggies either earlier in the day or a few days in advance. So like for this recipe, I have it as part of your prep, which is like on a Sunday or whatever day before you start the meal plan to cut up your cauliflower, cut your sweet potato, even cook the quinoa, boil, boil eggs, like just do all the things that really do take time. And cauliflower, cutting it up doesn't take like that much time, but it's already washed, had it in a bag, ready to go. And then from here, I just put it in the oven. So I'm gonna do a little bit of olive oil just for now, but like I really just kind of want to get it in there so that it starts cooking. Even though, like I said, I would still eat it raw, but we're not gonna do that today. So give it a little shake. And I'm not even gonna season it because we're going to make the tamari sauce, which kind of does have a lot of salt. So I'm not even gonna put salt and pepper on it right now. Um, maybe afterwards I will, depending on flavor. But just olive oil into the oven, and it's not even preheated yet, but I'm just gonna put it in because we don't got time to wait. Send it. Sending it. All right, and then quinoa. So as you all know, I don't know who you are, but whoever's watching, I love quinoa. It is easily my favorite grain. Um, I love it also because it takes 15 minutes to cook. Like it should, it's one of the easiest ones to cook by far. So I went ahead and rinsed two thirds a cup of red quinoa. You can use any kind of color. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, you could use rice in this recipe just as easy, but quinoa to me has a little bit more nutrients. It's actually pretty rich in protein. It's an aging grain. Like I just prefer it overall. I say that a million times and I'm saying it again, but I rinsed it because it kind of takes off some of the bitter flavor that often comes from quinoa. So I think it's, it's important to do that. And then with rice, it's important to do that too. So it doesn't get as starchy when you're cooking it. It's not like if you don't rinse your quinoa, like it's gonna taste disgustingly bitter. It's not really that. I just feel like it takes an extra 30 seconds and I always do it. So I didn't, I'm doing two thirds a cup because Brett and I are both eating this meal and I love having leftover quinoa in the fridge because I'll put it like in a salad or whatever. So I'm making a little bit extra, but the recipe calls for half of a cup, which would still be more than you need for one person. But it's really your call. So with quinoa and most grains, you're gonna do one part quinoa, two parts water for the most, I mean, most cases, and that's what I'm doing today. So I'm just gonna get this on a boil because I kind of want that to start going right away, even though it takes 15 minutes. Let's see if I can not spill this. Good luck. 
gonna Yeah, that might have been smarter. <laughs> Cooking 101. That's what I'm here for. That's, that's some grade eight home economics stuff right there. So, bring it to a boil, and then once it's boiling, we'll turn it down, cover it. I almost always add salt. Why are you so far away? I don't know. <laughs> I thought that too. I almost always add salt to my grains because it just really brings out the flavor and like you don't want to eat grains or pasta or anything that's not salted because then it tastes like nothing. Well, you know, kind of. I'm actually also going to add a bay leaf because even something as simple as adding one little bay leaf to your grain pot brings out a lot of flavor. Just one? Just one little bay leaf. And that's like totally optional. Honestly, if, if I were to like taste quinoa side by side without putting a bay leaf in it, it wouldn't be that big of a difference, but I have them, so why not? Um, yeah, like it's kind of, the, the steps in this recipe are so simple. Like wait for that to cook, wait for the cauliflower to cook. Well, should have got the quinoa done prior. I know, but. Whatever, it was good to talk about it. <laughs> Everyone needs to know about how much I love quinoa. So the, the real like main cooking part of this is making the sauce and it doesn't even take really any cooking or chopping because so in my first video when we made the sun dried tomato chicken burgers, I mentioned how much I love a microplane for mincing garlic. So you just take the garlic clove and mince it on here and you don't even have to chop anything. I'm going to do that with the garlic or the, sorry, the ginger today too. And the garlic. Yes. Um, and it's really easy. So in the recipe, I am looking at our 30 and 30 meal plan. See if I can get that, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of how the ebook looks when you sign up for it. Oops. You just get all the recipes with the photos and I'm just having it there for reference because I, I, I want to make this the way that you guys would make it. So a one inch knob of ginger. And when I say that, yeah. So for those of you just joining us, we uh, have got the quinoa on the pot and quinoa. now we're making the tamari sauce, I believe. Yeah, so cauliflower is roasting in the oven, yeah. quinoa is on the stove. Those are the things that are taking the longest and I kind of want to just get that out of the way and then I'm going to take my time making the sauce because it's the easiest part, but it's also the only part that really takes any prep. So a one inch piece of ginger. This is... Like, you don't need to take a ruler out. This is probably more than enough. Like, Brett and I really love ginger. It's an amazing, amazing anti-inflammatory, antioxidant root vegetable. It's grounding, it's warming, it's amazing for digestion. I love the flavor. I totally get why people wouldn't like it, but... It can be a little strong, but yeah. it's so good. Yeah, but it, like, once you start to love it and, like, I don't know, like, when I eat it, I literally feel like I can... Feel it working oh. in my digestive system. Marussia. Marussia! <laughs> Alright, so another little hack. I think I may have mentioned this before, but grab a spoon to peel your ginger because then you don't waste anything. And like, I'm gonna get in here and show like, how easy it is. Like, you literally just take a spoon backwards like that and then peel it. And then you're not you're not wasting any of the ginger, so you're getting just the skin. Rather than cutting it and trying to like take chunks off. Yeah, or even using a peeler. I mean, you could use a peeler. Peeler's not bad. I mean, you could also add the skin. Like, it's really not. It's not gonna kill you. I just sometimes ginger is super fibrous and it doesn't break down really easy. Like you can tell on this part here, it's a little bit dry because that's where we had already cut off a piece. But I'm still gonna go ahead and put all of that in the sauce. So. This is a little bit more than an inch, but I'm using all of it. Oh, it smells so good. I love ginger. I want to go to, I don't know, somewhere in, like, I don't know, India or where it grows naturally. Like, I can, you can grow it here. You can grow it pretty much anywhere, but I know that there's an abundance not in Canada where we are right now. And I want to get, like, really fresh, like, juicy ginger that you can just, like, rip off from the plant. and Because, like, this is already kind of dry. And it clearly wasn't grown here. But it still, it still works. You could use powdered ginger as well. But I would always advocate for the fresh. Guy says he loves you. <gasps> Guy! Gee! 
<laughs> Gee. <laughs> I miss you. All right, so this is like, that's how you can kind of tell when your ginger's a little bit old. So these are like all fibers and I don't typically put those in recipes because they don't really cook down. Um, they'll just sort of stay like long and hairy sort of. So I'm not even gonna use that, but definitely grab this as like the money. So all of that goes into the sauce. Do you think, should we put more than that? No, I think that's probably fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna even take this stuff from the top and I can hear the quinoa boiling. So I'm going to cover that with a lid. Yeah, so it's at a rapid boil. That's how we want it. Cover it, turn it down to low, let, let it, it sit, and that's it. And then the cauliflower is in there. I mean, you could, no, I was gonna, I was trying to think of another way to get ginger ready, but this is really the best way to do it. I call this um, salmon recipe a sesame salmon, but I'm not gonna lie, it's definitely more dominant in like the ginger garlic flavor, but the sesame seeds we're gonna put on the salmon make it really pretty, so I'm calling it sesame salmon. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Marusi is just figuring out why uh, she heard her name. Oh, because I'm saying hi. <laughs> She's like, did I say that? She's like, oh, okay, Brett is filming. This is why I heard my name. <laughs> yes, hello, Marissa. All right, so garlic. We miss you. Very much. Oh, very much. One clove of garlic. I'm going to add two because I'm crazy like that. <laughs> yeah, you're wild. <laughs> yeah, because I add more garlic than the recipe calls for. So you could use powdered, powdered garlic in this recipe and, and ginger, and it would be like lightning speed meal, but I'm doing fresh. And then again, microplane, look at that. It just breaks the garlic clove down to nothing. And then bam. Like in this recipe too, I would, I don't know, I would probably just chop it because I don't mind chopping garlic, but because I already dirtied up the microplane, may as well. Like I don't always do this with my garlic. Yeah, but it's so much more convenient. It really is. It's just so much easier. And I said last time, I think I got this microplane at like a Walmart or another store like that for maybe $10. You can get nicer ones. And we use it every single day, probably. Well. Close to it. Yeah, close. So that's just garlic and ginger in there. Every last grain. <laughs> All right. And then we're adding in one fourth of a cup of tamari or soy sauce. So this is tamari, which is basically just a gluten-free version of soy sauce. So it's made without wheat, but it's still, it, it, I mean, it tastes exactly the same. You could easily use soy, you could use coconut aminos. What? <laughs> Bruce is talking about meals without Ty. Yeah, you gotta start it back up again. <laughs> All right, so um, about a fourth a cup and with garlic and ginger and honey, about a tablespoon. You guys will learn very quickly that when I'm writing out recipes and I'm a saying like a tablespoon or, or a fourth of a cup, it's really just like eyeball it. So this is me adding a tablespoon of honey. Looks good. <laughs> and then that's the sauce. That's like, it? Yeah. Tamari. Mix her together. Garlic, ginger, honey. You don't even need to add the sweetener, but I like the way that it coats the salmon a little bit nicer. I might even actually turn the oven up so that the cauliflower cooks faster because... Because we hungry? Well, I'm not like super, super hungry, but like I'm going to cook the salmon and then everything will be done. Yeah, you might as well. I'm not gonna put, so the only other part that we need for this is sesame seeds, but I'm not gonna put them in the sauce. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the salmon and the cauliflower kind of just before it's done cooking. So just mix it up. Beautiful. And this is the flavor. <laughs> this is the flavor of the meal, honestly. And then a little fiber in there. 
you could, there might be leftovers and this pretty much tastes good on like every single vegetable in my opinion because the tamari or the soy sauce acts the salt and that's what brings out the flavor and everything so on that note what are you doing turning it up turning the pan up to cook the salmon so in the recipe i lay out this meal even easier than i did it so what i did was bake the cauliflower on a sheet pan and then after 15 or 20 minutes, put the salmon on the sheet pan with the cauliflower, put it back in the oven for another 10. Don't even watch it. I'm gonna turn it up. Um, you don't have to do anything. You just put it in the oven, walk away, and that's how you cook it. But today we're gonna do it on the stove top because I, I do prefer cooking salmon on the stove top. It makes the skin really crispy and I always eat the skin. It's where most of the nutrients are found in the salmon. You get a lot of those really healthy fats and omega-3s which are amazing for our brains and for protein and for basically just keeping everything flowing from our brain to our gut. So anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna do it on the stove. And the only reason I don't like doing it on the stove is because it gets a little smoky and the house is gonna smell like salmon, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, baking salmon in the oven, 10 minutes, easy, done. So. Let's talk salmon a little bit. This is, or was frozen salmon. I can't lie. We live in the oh. middle of nowhere <laughs> in Northern Canada. We are 12 hours from the ocean. Actually, there, there's probably rivers that are close that we could get salmon. A bit of salmon. Yeah, but there's no like seawater salmon. This is wild caught salmon, but it was previously frozen. Honestly, it's just, it's more affordable for me because like I'm not I'm not in the position right now to buy a twenty dollar wild organic salmon fillet, you know, like smaller than this. What? Bruce, yeah, <laughs> just constantly cracking me up. So I went with frozen, and it does. I I do tell a little bit of a difference after it's cooked. Like you don't get that like really strong salmon flavor, which I love. But you, I mean, it's still the same thing. And when you freeze fish, it does hold in all the nutrients, all those omegas and the healthy fats, like I said. So, I mean, you're still, it's still getting the similar end result, but like in terms of taste and texture, it's not really the same. But like anyone that thinks that you can't buy frozen fish, like it's okay, especially when you're in an area where you're not gonna get it local in the middle of the winter, like this is what I'm going for. But maybe one day in my life, I'll be on a river or by the ocean and I'll get fresh salmon. Don't count on it. <laughs> Just kidding. Very soon. Very soon, my dear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm turning up the pan like pretty high, pretty hot um, because I want that skin to like sizzle once I get it in the pan. And I'm going to use coconut oil to cook the salmon. And I just buy these giant tubs from Costco because I use coconut oil very very often in my cooking and in day to day like lotion hair whatever so i'm going to add like about a tablespoon of coconut oil to this pan yeah like the salmon's going to be done cooking before anything else but it's okay it's okay i'm going to turn the oven up to 450 maybe oh you put conventional bake is that not good? It's not the same. Oh God, what have I done? <laughs> uh, so, we got, are you getting distracted over there? No, I was, I was talking to a little <laughs> bit, yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> so we got about a tablespoon of coconut oil in the pan. I have it on pretty high right now. And I'm gonna let the oil warm up a little bit before I put the salmon in the pan. And it's gonna get like really smoky and sizzly and it's gonna make a mess. Um, oh, the cauliflower looks pretty good. Yeah, it's starting to come out. So it's getting, it's still hard, but it's getting a little browned. I should have made more. Yeah, you should have. So Leftovers. Have all of that. Well, we have more cauliflower, but. And yeah, I'm not even, actually I am going to put a little pepper on here, but I'm not adding any salt or anything else because all the flavor is going to come from the sauce. A little fresh pepper in my sad looking salmon, that's gonna taste good, so it doesn't matter. Marusia's suggesting that we go uh, do a little ice fishing and catch our own fish. 
We could maybe get trout or yeah. I don't know what else is around here. Trout. I'm not a fisherman. I have no clue. Pike? No, I don't know. Pretty much trout, like different kinds of trout. Which R I like trout. Rainbow trout? Yeah, rainbow trout's solid. Yeah. <laughs> um. But do we want to go sit in an ice hut? Do I want to go sit in negative 20 degree weather waiting for a fish to ke bite my bait? Could be fun. Yeah, it could be all right. We might have to like day drink all day. Yeah, really just get hammered. <laughs> <laughs> And then forget that we're fishing and then come home with nothing. Yeah. That sounds good. Anyways, I'm like a little bit at a loss here because the cauliflower is in the oven, the quinoa is on the pan or in cooking in the water and like we've got the sauce done and now we just have to cook this and the salmon's like pretty small. Like again, let's not talk about how the salmon looks, but it's not very thick. Um, like this will probably cook in like five minutes, not even. So I'm going to wait a little bit for the pan to warm up and you, like I timed this pretty bad. Yeah. I don't know what you want to do about that. Maybe we could come back or. No, nope. we're just going to keep going. It's I'm just gonna... me, you and Marussia hanging out. So. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna cut up a lemon because I really like lemon on my fish. It doesn't have it in the recipe. In the recipe, I actually show it with lime, but we're gonna go lemon because I don't have any lime. Uh, is your hand getting sore? My uh, arms are like where my elbow crease is. It's starting to sweat. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut up a little bit of lemon. Oh, Tommy Sue. Put some lemon on there. Hello, Tommy. And that's going to be for our garden. <laughs> I'm so ahead of it that I don't really know what to do anymore. Like, I could get a plate, maybe. Yeah, that would help. Because the cauliflower still has about 10 minutes. Or the quinoa has about 10 minutes. The cauliflower is about 10 minutes. This is only going to take about five. And I don't want to overcook it because I personally don't like salmon cooked all the way through because it gets really dry and like you want it to flake apart i actually even like it when it's still quite pink in the inside but this is so thin that i'm gonna put it on that hot pan it's gonna like cook through pretty fast yeah so i'm gonna wait a little bit could you sing us a song maybe no i'm not doing that <laughs> brett do you want to quiz me on anything um, of our ingredients that we're using. Um, I think you talked about pretty much everything. Talked about quinoa, talked about ginger, garlic, and tamari. And this dish is so simple. Maybe sesame seeds could be the next. We can talk about sesame seeds. We could, yeah, yeah, could fill some I, time. I love, I love sesame seeds. <laughs> Marussia suggests a good squat. No, I'm not going to no. do that. I've already worked out today. Silly Marussia. <laughs> So sesame seeds are one of my favorite seeds. They are higher in calcium than any dairy products. So if you're lacking calcium in your diet, try to eat like a tablespoon or two of sesame seeds and like sprinkle it on any kind of meal and you're actually gonna get an amazing source of calcium and magnesium from sesame seeds. More than a, fact. like one teaspoon you think is more than a cup of milk? No. I don't know the exact equivalent, but like... But it's still pretty close. It's ha There's more calcium in sesame seeds to like an equal amount of calcium. In I see what you're saying. Milk. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. I did not so, know that. What? I did not know that. So I have black sesame seeds and white sesame seeds. Um, they're both not toasted, but they taste a little bit different. I would say the black sesame seeds are a little bit more bitter, mm. but... Is there a difference in like nutritional value? I don't think so. I should look that up. That is a great question. But I really got both because I like the colors. Mm. And I like eating really colorful food. So that's why I have both. Um, okay, the pan is smoking. So we're just going to cook the salmon. Let's do it. We're just going to put it on. Let's go for it. And then we can at least eat it with some cauliflower. I agree. The forest comes doors. Um, okay. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Three of us. Your brother's here now, too. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Kai. Are you? King Kai. 85. All right, so that's the sizzling that I said was going to happen. We want that. 
because that means the skin is getting really crispy Full and sand. it's not going to get soggy because if you put salmon in the pan when it's not hot enough or when you're especially a cast iron pan it's just going to sit and then get soggy on the bottom but like i want to eat this and i want to like crunch on the skin yeah and i know a lot of people don't like that but Tough I really shit. encourage you to try eating the skin on your fish because that really is where a lot of the nutrients come from. And when you cook it right, when you get it nice and crispy, it's amazing, I think. So the coconut oil is really hot. Um, you can use, you could use butter. I wouldn't suggest using olive oil because olive oil does have a burning temperature when you put it in a pan in this hot and then eventually it'll like smoke and kind of turn bitter as well but coconut oil is really great for high heat um, avocado oil butter ghee tallow if you wanted to get really crazy with it okay Ella says the skin is fire it really is yeah it's and like this solid. is gonna get so crispy that you can like take your knife and your fork and it'll be like <laughs> mm, mm. but you have to eat it fast because basically once it hits more moisture it'll slowly start to decrisp but We'll see. Well, hopefully the quinoa will be cooked by then, and then <laughs> everything will time out well. So while that is kind of slowly cooking, I'm not going to put the sauce on the salmon yet because the tamari is going to just kind of dissolve in the heat, and I want it to caramelize a little bit. So I'm going to wait for it to cook through just a couple more minutes. But I am going to. Mm, okay. I am going to put some of the sauce on the cauliflower. So I'm going to get my little hot plate that Sierra just got me. Take it, Sierra. Which I'm really excited about. And then I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of the sauce on the cauliflower. And we're definitely going to be able to eat all of this. Oh yeah, no problem. Tonight. And then the rest is going to go... Oops. Use quite a bit there. I used a little bit more than I wanted. It's fine. Some sesame seeds. Do a little bit of both. So for those of you just joining, that sauce we had was tamari, ginger, garlic, and a little bit of what? Honey. Honey, that's right. Yeah, that's so right. a very, mm. very, very simple sauce. You could use garlic powder, ginger powder. We're going fresh, but the tamari acts as a salt and it just like brings the entire flavor components together. And so again, in the recipe, in my meal plan in 30 and 30, the the salmon, like I, I instruct you to put the salmon on the sheet pan with your cauliflower and then it just cooks in 10 minutes and you don't have to do anything. You just put sauce on the entire sheet, put it in the oven and you're good to go. But we're doing it on the stove top for that crispy skin. We want that good skin. All right, so that's Pretty good. Honestly, like I would eat the cauliflower at this point, but we're just gonna wait until everything's done. Just keep it in the oven. And that's it. You don't even have to use parchment paper, but I usually do because then I don't have to clean the pan after. All right, so you can see this, like I honestly maybe have already been cooking it too much because you can see all of the fat coming off of the salmon. So that means it's releasing from the inside. So I'm going to flip them because I don't want it to overcook on the inside because I don't like dry fish. It's not quite there, but we're going to flip it again and just let that skin keep crisping up. So the salmon's definitely almost done cooking. I'm gonna add the sauce in a little bit. I'm just gonna let that pot cook and then reflip it to get the cream. This, this, yeah, it's pretty crispy, but I want it to get even more crispy. And then that's it. So should we eat in a bowl or a plate? Mm, plate, plate. <laughs> What? Okay, says, let me get a piece of that John. I don't know what the hell John is, but J A W N, like fawn, but John. We're gonna need some clarification. Yeah, on. we don't know what the hell you're talking about, Kai. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna flip the stand again. Round two. How long have we been live? Does it say? 
Uh, no, not that my fingers can reach. All right, so that's pretty much as about as brown as I'm gonna make it. I can only poke <laughs> it. Up, it still jiggles a little bit, so that means that it's not completely cooked on the inside, which is making it a perfect time to add in the sauce. Perfect. It's just a delicate dance I'm doing here. I see that tamari is gonna evaporate. But I like that because I'm actually going to put a lid on it. And Just so it doesn't, yeah, I'm going to trap all the moisture in there. This is the money shot right here. So I'm going to put a lid and then all the tamari is not going to just disappear. Mm. Actually, hold on. I'm going to actually, I'm going to spoon, spoon over the sauce on the salmon. We're going to get real fancy. It's going to get crazy around here. Yeah. So... <laughs> the glass, like the oven's gonna be so dirty after, but that's fine. See, it's already thickening because that honey, too, the honey's gonna thicken it and kind of caramelize the sauce. But just keep spooning it over, and the flavor is gonna be absorbed into the salmon, anyways. But I don't want to lose all that amazing garlic and ginger. Just to evaporation. Yeah, and I don't want it to burn because garlic and ginger burns really fast as well. So I'm just going to keep spooning it. Oh <laughs> the oven beeps so much. When... Yeah, it seems a little unnecessary. I mean, like, the sandwich pretty much cooked, so I'm actually going to turn it off, lit it, and remove it from the heat. Done. Let it sit. Because, again, I don't like overcooked salmon. Like, Brent and I don't go out to eat that often, but we went out to eat, like, a couple weeks ago, and I got, what was it, haddock, I think. And I, it was so overcooked that I literally had to, like, chew it. Like, when you eat fish, it should be soft and, like, flaky and fall apart in your mouth. But I was, like, I had to cut it, and then I, like, it was eating it, and I was, like, like, chewing it. I was very upset. I let them know. <laughs> So the quinoa is pretty much cooked. I mean, there might be a little bit of water in there, but I secretly don't mind that. So what do you think? Should I plate everything and just... Yeah, let's get it on a good? plate and eat some food. I'm hungry. How's it look? Let me see. It looks pretty good. I think she does look banging, hey? Yeah. Oh, my mother joined. <laughs> Hello, Mom. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, haven't seen you in, in a while. So when I said I wasn't going to have to clean the pan because I put parchment paper on, that was a lie, apparently. And we determined that was a lie. The parchment paper didn't trap all the liquid. I really want a ceramic sheet pan. Like, I hate that the metal ones bend. You know what I mean? I want to yeah. get nice ceramic stuff. Bon appétit as well, Maru. Okay, so it's... There's the bay leaf. Make sure to always remove that before serving quinoa to your guests if you are serving it to people because it's not fun to chew on. So it's a little bit wet, but we don't have time to wait. So this is the red quinoa. And again, you can use any color. You can use rice. You can use, you could do this meal with, well, let's, let's just stick to grains. You could do rice or quinoa, but is that, you want more, less? Oh, that should be fine for me. We're down to just my mother now. That's okay. I appreciate that. We appreciate you, Mom. And then we'll get some salmon on, or cauliflower. I keep messing up those words. Should we just eat all of it? Yeah, let's crush it. Oh, yeah, it's perfectly cooked. Mmm, it does look really good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Cauliflower. Justice. Cauliflower and salmon are like, and quinoa. It's a match made. In heaven. A wild justice appears on the live. My number one supporter, besides Brett and Linda. 
Thank you so much for joining, Justice. <laughs> All right, so I just, I just like drizzled over the sauce and the sesame seeds because I don't want to waste any of it because I can tell that there's a bunch of garlic and ginger on here. And again, that's like a big, big part of the sauce. Mm. Should I even like spoon that over? Yeah, spoon everything we can in there. And by spoon, I mean... Uh -oh. like You're one? probably going to end up putting more tamari on your quinoa, right? Yeah, just a touch for sure. So the only thing we have left is the salmon. Mm, let me see it. Is it ready? Yeah, I don't know what to do with this pan. Hold on. Oh, goodness. The only thing left is the salmon, which looks nice and caramelized. Mm, it does look really good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. I want to have a smaller piece. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then your piece. Mm hmm And this is the finale. I'm pretty sure so it's been 30 minutes, 37 minutes. But that's because I didn't plan ahead well enough. But this meal takes, really only takes 30 minutes. The longest part of the meal is roasting the quinoa, roasting the cauliflower. <laughs> And baking the quinoa. Not baking the quinoa. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're struggling out here. The longest part of the meal is roasting the cauliflower and cooking the quinoa, which the quinoa only takes 15 minutes. And the cauliflower takes... It's really up to you. Like I, I like it a little bit more cooked, but it really only does take half an hour total. So you want to get the cauliflower in the oven right away. As soon as possible. Cauliflower in the oven? Yes. Oh, I thought you said quinoa in the no, oven. No, I got it this time. Cauliflower <laughs> in the oven right away. And then you do the rest super simple. You don't even have to cook the quinoa, the salmon in a, in a pan. You put it right on the sheet pan. And you have such an easy meal ready to go. So more sesame seeds because we want that calcium and that magnesium protein. And it looks beautiful. And this is my sesame salmon with roasted cauliflower and quinoa. The full recipe is in my meal plan, which is linked to my bio, my 30 and 30 meal plan. Do a little bit of lemon. I like lemon on my fish. And cauliflower, I guess. So yeah, I hope you guys try this one out. Now you can see how simple it is to make such a beautiful and nutritious easy meal in 30 minutes put everything in the oven don't worry about doing it on the stove top unless you want that good good crispy skin but it really is so simple and then the cauliflower is going to be used in another recipe so there's no food waste here and then we're also using more salmon on wednesday when i come back to make my salmon salad which is a way of reusing any extra salmon that you might have for making this recipe, which is pretty common, especially if you are getting a bigger filet. But other than that, we are good to eat. I will see you guys on Wednesday to use up the rest of the salmon to make a salad. But for now, I'm going to eat this delicious meal. So thank you guys. Good night. See you later, guys. <laughs>